everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf for Golf WRX. And we are at the fabulous golf club here at Royal Quebec. And uh, at the back of the range, we've got a nice private area here. And so today we're talking about body part positioning as number two on the list of what not to do on our countdown from five to one. Stay tuned for next Monday where we divulge our number one worst thing to do in the golf swing and how we provide you obviously with some fabulous you know replacements on what to focus on so all too often we hear well you got a position one and position two and you're looking for all these body part positions and we demonstrate you know you see these video analysis on a, on a regular basis from golf teachers where we talk about hey you know um your angle should be at this degree instead of that degree and you'll have a lot better angle of attack and all this stuff. Well, we suck at all that stuff. And, you know, as human beings, we're not built to perform tasks like that. We're already Pinocchio without the strings. So what you need to ask the human, the human being is, you know, what external task would you like to do? So they've had, you know, dozens of scientific bodies do hundreds of studies on how we learn motor skills and, and they keep doing it to this day you know universities that uh, that do some some really cool studies uh, Gabrielle Wolf is heading up those studies over at the University of Nevada, Nevada in Las Vegas and she's a specialist she's been working on this for the last two decades plus on you know demonstrating how whenever you're thinking about a body part and where to place it your performance is going to drop significantly compared to if you were to focus on an external task. And that's why you see Wisdom and Golf and what we do. Uh, we show you how to perform a task. You get better at it. Then you plug that into your golf swing and all of a sudden we have performance in the golf swing. It's really cool how we have these, all these different plugins that we can apply to our golf game. Why? Because it's the same two arms and two legs. It's just a slightly different tool. And you'll notice that the stuff that we do in regular life, like hammering nails or cutting grass or chopping wood, have everything to do with the way we swing a golf club. And, and you've seen, you know, through all the instructions from the 1900s to today, there are some really cool little nuggets along the way. You got to know how to, you know, choose the ones that you like and the ones that fit the human anatomy and the way the human wiring is designed. And the other stuff we can move to the side. So if you were to do some body part positioning, make sure that they relate to your task. So I'll give you an example. I'm cutting grass with a grass whip and none of my students ever fail at this. They see a blade, they look at the blade on the ground and then they start cutting the grass in each direction. Some may start by doing it like this and then they, you know, if you put them in a field with some heavy grass, they'll realize that, hey, I don't have enough range of motion to get through that grass. And they'll naturally start to expand on the range of motion depending on the thickness of the grass. So we are then reacting to the environment. And that's where we are at our very best. 40 million bits of information per second that goes through the system when we're reacting to something and 40 bits of information per second when we're thinking consciously about stuff. I don't know about you, but I know which machine I want to use. So if I'm cutting through, let's say, a dandelion. So here's my dandelion. Put it on a nice stem. And if I cut through the dandelion stem, I can see that the ball is just going to fall to the ground. So if I have the ball on the ground and I have a golf club in my hands and the sole of the club cuts through the stem, well, that ball is going to go in the air. So how about I just focus on cutting grass in both directions. And you'll notice when you put this on video, you'll be amazed at how on plane you are. And then if you go back and look at the angles that you're trying to hit, you're going to go, oh, I'm no longer over the top. Well, because if you're over the top, you're no longer cutting grass. You're gouging the ground and the wife is going to yell at you because you're making a mess out of the backyard. So 
extra motivation for you, huh? <laughs> We're just cutting grass in both directions along the surface of the ground. All of a sudden, those angles iron themselves out. So you look at it from this angle. I'm never going to do that because I, I can no longer cut grass in that direction. Still can't. Still can't. Oh, there we go. There, now I can cut grass in that direction. Whoop, now I'm, I'm cutting grass way off to the right and I'm gonna have a tendency to scrape before I get there. So as long as you're focused on a nice task, then you can perfect the way you perform that task. And it's nice, that, you know, curiosity, you wanna, you wanna see which body, which body parts and which body positions do best for you. And, and then your brain will tell you, hey, you know, this is way too much effort. I feel like I'm going to pop a rib. Whereas this, oh man, I could cut grass all day performing it that way. So the, um, the body parts, and it, you know, as a teacher, if you've been teaching for a while, I've been doing it for 35 years, and it's funny how at the beginning, I used to show them, okay, you need to get in this setup and then you need to do that. And then if a person was um, a diligent practicer, they would end up overdoing the positions all the time. Because they say, yep, this is what Sean told me to do and I'm doing that right now. And then they get back to the next lesson. I'm going, whoa, that's crazy. You, you know, you, you don't realize what you're doing. And Time and time again, this is what we see. Hey, you know, take the backswing only halfway. And then they take it all the way to the top of the backswing. And then you look and they go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I was doing that. So let's stop, you know, trying to put ourselves in different positions and let's find tasks that's going to, you know, perform the positions for us. And that's really what it's all about. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm hammering a nail with a hammer in the side of a door frame, if I'm looking at my elbow and so many of you are pulling your eyes off of what's going on and you start looking at your body parts to make sure they're in position, well, if I was holding the nail and you were the one holding the hammer and you start doing that, deal's off, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hold that nail for you because I know you're going to miss. But if I've seen you practice and I can see that you know, tagging a nail is really easy for you. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm tagging a nail into the ground here. Oh, I missed. What am I going to do? Oh, I think I'm defective. Do I put? No, man. You just look at the nail again. Okay, I got it that time. So as you perform the task of nailing nails all day, well, you miss, you miss, you miss, you nail it. Then all of a sudden, Later on in the day, you're no longer missing the same way and, and the pattern of your hammer becomes a lot more streamlined. And then by the end of the week, you're going tap, tap, whap, and the thing just drives straight into the, right into the board and you're an expert with a hammer. Just like you would be an expert with the grass whip. Just like you'd be an expert with an ax. But then all of a sudden you hear people barking up your door and they go, I've lost everything. I've lost my swing. Would you ever hear a carpenter say, I've lost my hammer? Or somebody who says, hey, I can't cut grass anymore. Or I can't chop down trees anymore. I'm defective. That doesn't happen. The only reason why it happens is you're distracting yourself off the task. So here's something that's extremely important, okay? You need to listen up on this because it's the way we work as individuals. So... And this is going to have tremendous bearings. And this is why it's important to keep listening. I know, I know sometimes it seems a little bit long, but this is really important. And this is the way my brain works. So to get the nugget, you got to wait a little bit. So if I'm a, um, a doctor or, you know, I'm a, an architect and I'm getting ready to perform a very specific task of drawing. Well, the instant my brain perceives that I'm trying to make a manipulation, it'll freeze the body like a statue. If I grab my phone out of my pocket and I want to check my emails, well, as soon as my, I'm getting ready to push with my, my finger on the digits, then my brain freezes the body instantly and, okay, you're trying to manipulate. 
If I sit at the table, why? To immobilize my body so I cut my steak. Now, if you're trying to find a position and you're trying to manipulate your anatomy to find a position, the brain will freeze the body. And so that's really dangerous as far as, you know, range of motion is concerned for your swing because if it freezes the legs and the body, then all of a sudden the upper arms start to collide into the rib cage. So if I was a lumberjack, here's my tree, and I'm trying to position the ax to meet the tree, this is what it's gonna look like. I'm not gonna get a lot of work done. So if I want to strike the tree powerfully with ease, I'm gonna take the weight of the ax and I'm gonna heave it. Notice how my body glides out of the way when I do that? And this is so key because if you're manipulating and you're trying to heave the ax and you freeze the body, you'll knock yourself silly. So there's my, the spot where I wanna hit the tree, heave the ax, let it fall to the side of the tree, heave, let it fall. So when I'm using the weight of the ax, my body is responding to that weight and it knows exactly how to get out of the way. So if I were to make sure my arms fall, well, notice how my, my body freezes. But if I say, let the ax fall to the side of the tree, my brain's got to go get the ground, use the ground to get the body out of the way so I can get to the side of the tree. It's called the human kinetic chain. And it's built into us through millions of years of evolution. And that's how we get to do stuff without having to think about it. If you had to think about body parts while you're driving a car, you wouldn't be insurable. So we can put that completely to rest and start performing tasks by using the weight of the instrument. So if I have a dandelion stem to cut with an ax, heave the ax, let the weight of the ax fall through the dandelion stem. See how simple that is? And you'll be amazed at how accurate you can be with that particular drill. See that? All I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I got my eyes on the grass between the leading edge of the club and the ball, and I am using the weight of my arms and club, and I'm falling through that dandelion stem and off those golf balls go. So have a look at um, my video entitled, Best Golfers Are Lumberjacks, or Sledgehammer Axe Drill. Those are two awesome videos. And that'll give you a, a, an amazing drill. I'll, I'll, you know, I'm talking about this drill more in detail so that you can start using the weight of the instrument to perform your tasks and stop manipulating your body parts to try and find positions that are based on opinions, based on assumptions as to how the human body works and how that the club should meet the ball. The ball can't ever be your target. If the ball's your target, well then, everything stops at the ball, won't it? So, ball is my target. Why would I continue any further? That's like me saying, hey, go to your car. And you go, then what? I haven't given you a place to go yet, right? So when you go to your car, it's because you have a destination to go to. So the car is the means by which you get to your destination. The golf ball is the means by which your skill is allowed to shine. So that ball needs to go over there. How does the ball go over there? It needs to go over there in the air with some nice velocity and in that direction. How's the ball get in the air? Well, grass cutting is a really good one. So I gotta cut through the stem using the weight of my arms and club in the direction I want the ball to go. Okay, let it cut through the stem. And off the ball goes and we have a fabulous contact and the ball ends up, you know, at the green, whatever, and I get to chip and putt or I get to putt the ball. So you have a means by which to get to the target. The means by which is use your tool, use the weight of the arm tool unit 
and then deliver through a nice task in the direction you want the ball to go and your golf game will go this way and you'll never lose your swing. Isn't that great? Enjoy that. See you on Monday.